आई फील कि कभी कभी मुझे लगता है कि गॉड इज अट इट्स नॉट गॉड इट्स सम वन हु इज कंट्रोलिंग दिस कंप्लीट स्टिमुलेशन एवरी ह्यूमन बींग इज हैविंग अ डिफरेंट डी एन ए दैट मीन्स वी आर कनेक्टेड विद सेपरेट यूनिक आई पी एड्रेस सो समवेयर इन दिस यूनिवर्स देर इज सम वन हु इज मैनेजिंग ऑल दिस आई पी एड्रेसेज टूगेदर आप इजिप्ट के गॉड्स को देखो तो वो भी गोल्ड पहने होते हैं अपने ग्रीक के गॉड्स देखो वो भी गोल्ड पहने होते हैं है ना सारे गोल्ड से लदे होते हैं so that could be something that the the race the, or the aliens who actually created these two robots adam and eve they created them because they were in need of gold they came to earth because they want gold maybe maybe that gold or gold dust can help that planet to survive or something sort of they were needing that gold that particular thing our brain is actually a data set there a lot of information we keep on gathering since we take birth and it's, it's every time we every second we are consuming some data and this complete world is actually now a data set we all are working for data so what will happen in future what i feel that um, there will be companies who will actually take your brain out and everything in your brain that can be converted into a digital brain so and your body that can be given for recycle like in buried or can be burnt or whatever a major change everyone will see in next 5 years and the major change will be there will be no screens हेलो दोस्तों वेलकम टू द शो ऑफ बुक्स एंड थ्योरीज पॉडकास्ट आज हम बात करने वाले हैं सिमुलेशन थ्योरी के बारे में कुछ साइंटिफिक रिसर्च और कुछ साइंस फिक्शन के बारे में किस किस को एवेंजर्स की मूवी मैट्रिक्स या अलग अलग इस टाइप की साइंस फिक्शन मूवी पसंद है तो दोस्तों ये किताब है द एलिजरी एस्केप रिटर्न बाई सिद्धार्थ मोहन की यह हमको एक साइंस के दूसरे वर्ल्ड में ले जाती है एक डिफरेंट एल्यूजन में लेके जाती है सो so गाइस आज हम बात करते हैं सिद्धार्थ के साथ सो हाय सिद्धार्थ हाउ आर यू हाय हिमांशु सर रियली एक्साइटेड टू बी हियर फॉर माय फर्स्ट फर्स्ट पॉडकास्ट एंड यू नो रियली पंप्ड फॉर योर क्वेश्चंस सो फर्स्ट टेल मी व्हाट व्हाट मेड यू राइट दिस बुक क्यों लिखी आपने ये किताब मतलब यार मतलब आप ये मतलब लोग कुछ और करते हैं किताब में तो आप तो बहुत बात की वजह रहती है वाई वाई यू रिटर्न दिस बुक ऑनेस्टली आई ट्रीट दिस बुक एज सिंपल यू नो एक्सरसाइज इन राइटिंग एंड एक्सरसाइज ऑफ माई स्किल्स बिकॉज यू नो प्रायर टू राइट प्रायर टू एक्चुअली राइटिंग दिस बुक आई यूज टू राइट एन आउट ऑफ ऐसे यू नो शॉर्ट स्टोरीज एट्सेट्रा यू नो वेदर इट बी फॉर लाइक स्कूल असाइनमेंट्स के लिए या or for my own fun and uh, during the lockdown i just put my pen to the paper and you know started uh, writing away until i actually showed the first draft to you know some of my friends and family and they said it was you know of the quality to be published so i guess that's what inspired me uh so yeah okay so simulation theory ek aisa topic hai jo na mujhe bahut excite karta hai uh mere ek book hai जिसका टाइटल है रिदम रोजर द सीक्रेट्स ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन और फिर उसका सेकंड पार्ट है रिदम रोजर द हीट ऑफ द हीट ऑफ फैंटस मगोरिया उसके टोटल आठ पार्ट है अभी दो पार्ट आउट है एंड कंप्लीट साइंस फिक्शन उसमें सिविलेशन थ्योरी भी है कॉन्टेनियम थ्योरीज भी है इट एक्चुअली टॉक्स अबाउट इलेक्ट्रोमैगनेटिक वर्ल्ड तो एक सिविलेशन वर्ल्ड है जो इलेक्ट्रोमैगनेटिक रेडिएशन का है और वो पूरा उस सिविलेशन पर बेस्ड है इट्स अ नेशनल बेस्ट सेलिंग टाइटल्स दोनों बुक में नेशनल बेस्ट सेलर है वो तो मतलब मैं इस पर आता है कि सिमुलेशन जो एक वर्ड है ना मतलब मुझे भी कभी कभी लगता है कि हम सब लोग ना एक सिमुलेशन में रह रहे हैं सो वॉट्स योर कॉन्सेप्ट आप क्या सोचते हो उस बारे में वॉट्स योर थ्योरी ऑफ सिमुलेशन आई मीन यू नो एवर सिंस कंप्यूटर्स वर इंट्रोड्यूस टू दिस वर्ल्ड आई फील लाइक यू नो एवेंचुअली टाइम वज गन कम वेर यू नो पीपल स्टार्ट वॉन्डरिंग की uh the reality around us is all constructed you know none of it is uh real it's all virtual and uh, this was something that was you know uh, really popularized among uh discussions of culture as well as you know the public in general after the release of this movie the matrix i'm sure a lot of you must have seen it in 1999 and the hamare zamane ke movie thi i mean to all the uh, yeah. Gen Z or you know anyone born in the 2000s, I guess. So, so uh, I born in I born in 1980. So my the <laughs> Matrix ka kisai hai ki uh, I had a very good friends when I was in my engineering college. 
सो एट दैट टाइम आई थिंक मेट्रिक्स का फर्स्ट पार्ट या सेकेंड पार्ट रिलीज हुआ एंड उस समय ना मतलब जनरली हॉलीवुड मूवीज हॉल वगैरह में कमी लगती थी तो यूज टू गेट सी डीज एंड यूज टू वॉच इट इन आर हॉस्टल तो जब मेट्रिक्स आई ना सो मेरा एक फ्रेंड था बहुत क्लोज फ्रेंड ही हैज वॉच दैट मूवी आई थिंक टेन ट्वेंटी टाइम्स और उसने कल वॉच नहीं करी ही एक्चुअली रोट आउट एवरी थिंग जब वो देखता था एक सी देन यूज टू राइट दैट क्योंकि ही ही इज द ओनली पर्सन हु एक्चुअली ब्रॉड आउट द मीनिंग आउट ऑफ इट मतलब हम लोग जो देख रहे थे वी आर लुकिंग लाइक एन एंटरटेनमेंट या फाइट सीन हो रहे हैं ये हो रहे हैं वो रहे हैं बट ही वॉज द गाय हु एक्चुअली नरेटेड अस इन द वे शूड भी कि भाई ऑरिकल कौन है फ्यूचर कैसे देख रहे हैं वॉट द सिमुलेशन दे आर वेड सो ही एक्चुअली एनालाइज दैट कम्प्लीट मूवी आफ्टर वॉचिंग टेन ट्वेंटी टाइम्स एंड ही एक्चुअली एक्सप्लेन अस कि एक्चुअली मैट्रिक्स है क्या सो आई रियली लर्न दैट कंसेप्ट सो बहुत अच्छा कंसेप्ट है Yeah really because uh, I feel the Matrix was like one of the first uh, uh like mainstream Hollywood movies that uh, combined both action as well as philosophy you know because if you rewatch the movie there's a lot of questions about um, you know existentialism and uh, if our thoughts are truly our own and not just you know something that a computer is dreaming up and you know all of these things are not something all of these questions are not something that you would be asked by like big budget uh, blockbuster movies and i feel the matrix was the first of its kind so that's why like oh. people are so you know obsessed with that movie including myself to this day and it's it's a very futuristic movie yeah but like, 2000 mein aayi thi but when you see that movie the aaj ke date mein bhi it's it's up to the mark aaj ke latest jo gen z ke time pe jo movies aa rahi hai na mm. unse bhi wo kahin upper level pe That's the that's the beauty of that movie that the concert won that. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely because uh, the movie is still very relevant to our time, uh, considering that we live in an increasingly online world, and uh, you know the question that uh, you know with the advent of AI in the past couple of years, uh, that is our reality even you know real or is it all just a constructed uh, simulation and you know there are still like many conspiracy theorists out there who strongly believe in the simulation idea and uh, so 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 how much research you have done for this simulation theory and simulation i get to build a story or about hope uh so i did read a lot into uh, about simulation theory as well as this other thing called uh, dead internet theory i'll uh, talk about that in a bit so like uh, can you repeat that word yeah dead internet theory it's like a dead internet very okay. interesting concept so first of all simulation theory to so, um you know like i was a 14 year old boy at the time of uh, writing the illusory escape and i like many other people my age was extremely impressionable so uh, i mean the first time after watching the matrix the obviously the question popped up in my mind that you know is there actually some precedent or you know research backing whatever ideas have been shown in this movie and you know like a lot of uh, deep diving on the internet eventually led me to you know all these various theories about how our reality may be constructed uh, you know by like super advanced computers or ai and a lot of them were actually you know giving out some very valid points and you know obviously the whole idea may not seem that realistic you know as uh, i've grown older now but you know back then for a 14 year old boy that uh, yeah you're not grown older yaar i would mean thodi boy hai this ha but still like you get me uh, i mean the impact that the movie like the matrix uh, with could that had on me while i was you know 13 14 is obviously uh, way more than it would have on me now but oh but um, matlab uh, simulation theory when i uh, read this word na or uh, i have a person who do lot of research mm-hmm. kyunki mere jo book hai rhythm bro janos ne bahut research kar raha not only for that for my youtube channel because my channel is books and theory you yeah. know so where i were i at a talk about book i do podcast or book but there are many videos where i create theories mm. and different different type of theories Sounds so mere jo simulation theory hai na uh-huh. uh, i always believe something different mm. uh jab computer network ki baat karte hain mm. so we talk about ip address every gadget mm. every computer system every electronic gadget is having a unique ip address mm. agreed yeah every human being 
is having a different DNA. Mm. Agree? So if just to consider that every human being is having a different DNA, that means we are connected with a separate unique IP address. So somewhere in this universe, there is someone who is managing all these IP addresses together. Mm. So this IP address ka tam khatam, wo yahan se katata bye bye. This is my simulation. So I feel that we all are working in a simulation theory. So when we say that we God and Bhagavan, I feel that sometimes I think that God is a myth. Mm. It's not God. It's someone who is controlling this complete simulation. Mm. What's your take on this? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it's a really interesting way to look at things. How you know, in the modern age, um, our IP address is our DNA. Ban jata hai. And the fact that, you know, the IP address, it's used for identifying, you know, our networks. And obviously that must be linked to like a central hub or someplace uh, like that. And, you know, who knows where the uh, IP addresses actually, you know, go. So, yeah, it's certainly a very interesting theory. And um, like many people theorize that, you know, uh, uh, a much more powerful being than us, you know, who's like uh, indescribable, who's formless or uh, hides in the shadows is actually the one pulling on the strings and making us and like making us do, uh, you know, his bidding, but at the same time makes us think that we all have uh, our own independent thoughts and actions, whereas in reality, you know, even the thoughts are being given to us by, you know, the individual and yeah, that's like my two cents on it. You were talking about that someone else is controlling us. So I have one more theory into it. Mm. Uh, you have heard the story of Adam and Eve. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Kahani yeah. So it was first Adam and Eve who, who were created by God on this earth in a garden called Eden Garden. Mm. And then uh, when, when when Eve has taken that apple as suggested by a snake, and the Eden Garden was removed and they were uh, left over this earth to live mm. and survive. Yeah. I have a different theory for it. Mm. I think, uh, like we Mars, we are going to Mars. So what do we do? We will go to Mars, we will make a sort of greenhouse. We will put astronauts in it. They will try to survive there, they will do research there. Mm. And then if, if, if something happens, then they can actually create Mars for the human race. Yeah. So maybe, Millions of years ago, or precisely 4.2 billion years ago, mm. million years ago, on uh, another planet, on another uh, race, they would have found Earth. Mm. Now, they must be confused. Can they Earth be or not? Yeah. So, they must have created a greenhouse mm. in which they would have planted, they have placed plants, trees, fruits, everything into it. Yeah. And they have left two robots, a simulated robots mm. into it. Okay? And now they were watching it. They said, okay, Adam and Eve, these two robots, can they survive into this garden? Mm. So after some time they realized that okay, these two robots, they can they are actually able to survive. And the complete controlling and monitoring was happening through the DNA. So then the IP addresses that was getting monitored from their monitor room. Mm. Okay. properly then they threw an error into it. Just we put system an error in yeah. So they, they sent an error. That error is actually, I to apple or to snake. To bolo. test if you know okay. the... Uh, yeah. Oh, like that, a, that, that, that. To throw like a wrench uh, in the system to see if it still holds here. Yes. So when they error, dala gaya, so they realized, ki, okay, they are now surviving on their own. Yeah. So now scientists thought, ki, okay, now we have made the Eden Garden. Humne Let's remove this and see if these robots can survive uh, on this planet. Mm. And they would have removed that Eden Garden and they started roving in that complete earth. They started surviving, they started making babies and all those things. Mm. Now, what on the purpose of those aliens? So there is one more thing, uh, a theory which, which one of the author gave me while I was having a podcast. See, if you have seen all our uh, god goddesses and gods, mm. they were wearing gold. Yeah. Mm. Up Egypt ke gods ko dekho, toh gold pane hote hain. Na Greek ke gods dekho, toh gold pane hote hain. Na na sare gold se lade hote. So that could be something that the the race the, or the aliens who actually created these two robots, Adam and Eve, 
they create and because they were in need of gold they came to earth because they want gold yeah, maybe okay. maybe that gold or gold dust can help that planet to survive or something sort of they were needing that gold mm-hmm. that particular thing so isliye unhone un do ko banaya ki bhai yahan pe na gold produce karo so that that can be taken up to the different planet so we have dekho egypt mein aur kai jagah pe aapko dikhate na ki there there could be an स्पेसशिप सॉर्ट ऑफ थिंग और यहाँ पे एयरपोर्ट सॉर्ट ऑफ थिंग हो सकता था या देर आर देर आर रेसेस लाइक आधा घोड़े के हुए हैं और नीचे से इंसान जैसे है मिक्स ब्रीड सॉर्ट ऑफ थिंग देर आर मेनी पिक्चर्स एंड मेनी की राइटिंग्स है फॉर दैट सो दिस कैन ऑल्सो बी अट ऑफ सिमुलेशन थ्योरी स्टेम फ्राम सिंगल सेल्ड ऑर्गेनिजम बट वेर इंस्टर इंट्रोड्यूस्ड to the earth by some mm-hmm. external rays we just aur aapko ek aur interesting baat batau ji uh as per research if if the if you go and back calculate the dns mm-hmm. uh you will find that it was first the adam who was born uh, eve eve was the first who born mm-hmm. and adam was born almost uh after 1 lakh years oh <laughs> of eve yes they have done sort of some sort of simulation and then they have yeah then that analysis and that there will be a difference of age between them yeah, i think it might be you know because uh, you obviously wouldn't waste resources and introduce you know two highly advanced beings on a planet that you've created so they first tested like for uh, tens of thousands of years with eve first to see you know if she is holding up and then they introduced yeah. adam to you know that oh yes there is potential for the meeting yeah Yes, yes. Maybe we don't know, but yeah. but these are the theories. What uh, I that keep on coming in my yeah. mind as well. So you were talking about that dead internet. Yeah. What's that theory? Dead internet theory. It's something that uh, I'm pronouncing correct, not dead. Yeah. Dead internet. Right? Dead internet theory. So, um, so according to that, it says it states that uh, you know. as is as you can describe the internet as a sort of community of people like a hub, hub where you know billions of people meet every single day uh, interact from the minus uh, minutes to ways such as you know liking your posts or commenting or uploading some form of content you know all of that can essentially be boiled down to human interaction where behind our screens thinking that we are speaking or interacting with someone or something created by a real living thing on the other end but what dead internet theory says that it completely refuses you know with the fact that most of the you know interaction that is done with users on the internet are actually humans so what dead internet theory states that is um, most of the activity that is carried out on the internet is automated meaning that it's carried out by um, you know like millions or billions of bots that have been created by uh, you know like like uh, some group of organizations or corporations to simulate that you know the internet is actually a thriving community of real living humans who are interacting with each other but in reality you know it's just a bots that have been automated to you know go like this post or comment on this post make make these websites seem crowded to show to uh, make it seem to us that you know the internet is actually a bustling place whereas in fact it's like more of a desolate landscape filled with bots rather than uh, you know real humans so that's what dead internet theory is basically and uh, this theory was like really popular um back in the 2010s uh, but you know after a while people started disbelieving in this theory that is up until recently um you know with the advent of ai and i think it was uh, elon musk's acquisition of twitter that uh, after he acquired twitter people realized that how much of twitter which is what, like one of the busiest uh, networking sites in the world how much of that is actually bots compared to humans you know like automated accounts oh. who are being told who are being instructed by algorithms so like go and like this post go uh, make this comment or you know post this and how how less of that is actually you know coming from you know real human thought so oh. and that's why and currently you know with the, the advent of ai when you know ai can basically uh, act like real human beings online uh, you know basically yes. do everything that humans there are, there are many there are many influencers who are actually ai influencers yeah exactly so and the thing is we don't even know on from the r end of the screen that you know the content that we're consuming or the uh, 
um, interactions that we're doing with other users on the internet, if it's actually even, you know, generated automated content or, you know, real uh, human beings. So that's why this theory has, you know, recently there's been a resurgence of this theory again. People are starting to believe it. And, you know, in many ways it can also be seen as, and uh, by some extension, uh, simulation theory, because while our tangible physical world may not be a simulation, but the internet is as much a second home to us, uh, you know, as our real world is. And much of that second home is constructed by, constructed or, you know, uh, made lively by AI and, you know, bots rather than real human beings. So in that way, I, in that sense, even I feel that's kind of a simulation if you think about it. Yeah, I'll tell you, um, I've recently uh, launched a new channel called Money Molecules. True. And that channel is completely AI based. Mm. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm not coming in front of that channel. It's completely managed by AI. The content, the script, the voice, the edits, everything is done by AI. It's a completely an AI uh, channel. It sounds like an interesting uh, social experiment. To see. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it, talks about, it talks about money. It talks about various factors of money. Mm. How you can come out of debt and all those things. But it's completely an AI generated uh, uh, content. Mm. There's nothing which is manually done in that. Yeah. And recently, one more thing I have studied uh, uh, a theory which will, I don't know how much days or how many years it will take to come live. Like, it's digital human beings. You heard about it? No, please uh, enlighten me. Okay. Well, although I'm making a video on that, but what digital human beings is, like, I feel that in uh, what is our brain? Our brain is actually a data set. Mm. The lot of information we keep on gathering since we take a birth, mm. and it's, it's every time we, every second we are consuming some data. Yeah. And this complete world is actually now a data set. We all are working for data. Mm. So what will happen in the future? What I feel that um, there will be companies who will actually take your brain out, mm. and everything in your brain that can be converted into a digital brain. So, and your body, that can be given for recycle, like can be buried or can be burnt or whatever. Yeah. It's not needed. So once your brain is into that service on, on the cloud or uh, some, some Azure sort of thing, mm. and when, when your brain is there, you are always alive. Your, mm. your physique, your appearance, that can be generated through artificial intelligence. You have influencers. So you have to make a lot of influence. So you will be available digitally. Mm. And your brain, your brain content will be also available in that cloud. So, if my wife talks to me, she can switch on the screen and she can talk to me. And I will talk to her and she will tell me what my brain will say. Because my brain is available in that cloud. This is what I feel that in the coming years this will come into picture. Yeah, it's actually not that, uh, you know, far off in today's world. Because, you know, 10 years back, we would have thought such an idea would be absurd, but I mean, you already have people like Elon Musk working on Neuralink, which is very similar to whatever you just described now. Uh, oh. That has shown like some a lot of early potential and signs of success. So, and the fact that you know, uh, like the act of transferring our digital consciousness into like a host body, that has been so prevalent in science fiction since you know the last fifty years or something. That uh, you know, it's about time. Uh, that something like this actually takes shape, such an idea, of, you know, um, oh, like a digital brain, as you said. So what I think with coming up of AI and machine learning and everything, this, this thing is not far away. Yeah, absolutely. And and I and I also have just to tell on this podcast today, a major change everyone will see in the next five years, mm. and the major change will be there will be no screens. Adam sab screen se pareshan hai na ye bacche laptop ke screen pe baithe hain mobile ki screen pe baithe hain team pe baithe hain i'll tell you in next 5 years or maybe not even next 5 years but in next 2 to 3 years there would be no screens you know why uh, i'm guessing that you know all of the content is directly goes into your brain you have no need of any screen no i wo to shayad tel di nahi hoga but what i feel that if you see recently, there are a lot of development in VR glasses. Mm -hmm. So, this VR glasses will replace your screens. 
आप वी आर ग्लासेस लगा के ही रहोगे वट एवर यू वॉन्ट टू सी यू वॉन्ट टू वर्क यू वॉन्ट टू सी और जो मोबाइल पे कर रहे हैं एवरी थिंग थ्रू वी आर ग्लासेस सो एक्चुअली दिस मोबाइल स्क्रीन लैपटॉप स्क्रीन ये सब खत्म हो जाएगा आई स्टिल रिमेम्बर अबाउट टू थाउजेंड टेन और ट्वेल्व जब नया नया थ्री जी आया था फोर जी आया था एट दैट टाइम वी यूज टू टॉक अबाउट कि ये जो बिग बिग स्क्रीन है दिस विल बी फिनिश एंड स्क्रीन विल बी दिस द मोबाइल्स एंड टूडे वी आर सींग दैट इन इन द इन वन डेकेड दैट हैज हैपन्ड स्क्रीन हैज गॉन शॉर्ट अप एंड वट आई फील दैट इन नेक्स्ट थ्री टू फाइव ईयर्स दिस स्क्रीन विल बी नॉन इट विल बी एक्चुअली द वी आर ग्लासेस विच विल टेक अप लाइक एनी लाइक मे बी नॉट ओनली वी आर ग्लासेस बट इट कुड बी लाइक कॉन्टैक्ट लेंसेस आई थिंक it could be on that level as well yeah i mean i think google has already developed like uh, a lens of that sort where i mean the lens is still basically a screen but uh, all the information is like going directly into your view rather than holding the screen so yeah i or honestly it might even be less than 3 years before that happens other when we talking about the simulation theory hmm. uh, do we live in consciousness Yeah, I mean, um, you know, there is the uh, famous philosophical argument. I think, therefore, I am. So, if I possess the ability to think independent thoughts, then obviously, I must possess a consciousness. But then, how this simulation theory relates to it? Is it not contradictory? It is. Or this, this, this consciousness is also being fed to us through this IP addresses. I mean, if you look at through the lens of obviously both of these things are contradictory, but that kind of depends on whether you believe in um, simulation theory or not. So people who don't believe, no, but but I have a but I have a contradictory answer also. Today, when we are saying that we have AI generated influencers who behave, they have emotions, they talk to you like that. That means we are feeding those uh, simulation simulated world uh, through the IP addresses. Yeah. So is it not possible that we are also are some sort of AI generated influencers who are getting fed through our DNA? Yeah, and and we and we always say that DNA is something which which makes every human being different, every human being's emotions different, the thought process different, the consciousness different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it uh, you know if that theory were true that you know um, that human beings are just like the highly advanced puppets being. a sent being created on the earth then uh controlled by you know some unknown species or entity or even god then yeah i guess we can say that you know the, our consciousness aren't even a product of our own imagination but you know something that's fed to us oh okay coming back to the book so how much time you took to write finish this book uh so i took you know with the editing process and everything it was uh, around 6 months i guess um oh, i would know the publisher uh wordly wise the great wordly wise wordly wise publisher ki ah. chandni mathur yeah i know <laughs> <laughs> she edited my the broja oh yeah no it's the uh, she is you know uh, she and wordly wise really uh, just guided me every step of the way and they amazing oh, yeah um i know her when she was not a publisher but she was an editor she is she is a very good editor yeah. so i know her from that time she edited my book rhythm roger the secrets of electron so i know her since then and uh, yes now she is doing very good in, in this publishing industry i know her very well so uh, what's the plan for next one so i think you have already finished this book on a clear path yeah uh next one honestly either it's a sequel to this or you know just something entirely different uh because i kind of like you know, contrary to what other people think um i kind of like stories when they end on cliffhangers and there's no actual resolution to them because that only uh feeds that only serves your imagination to create up scenarios that the story is or will be likely to end up in So I think I, I see the biggest problem in writing sequels. Mm. I'll tell you as as an author, I'll tell you why. Mm. Like when I wrote Rhythm Roger: Secrets of Electron, mm. it finished on a cliffhanger. Mm. Okay, and that was like a huge, huge success, mm. which was a blockbuster. Mm. We have sold I don't know how many copies we have sold, and like everyone was talking to me, what happened to Grandmother? What happened to Grandmother? Mm. Okay, 
so i wrote a second part mm-hmm. the heat of phantasmagoria mm-hmm. okay and i was like okay now i have to finish this series the complete eight parts i will write and i will finish it mm-hmm. and i wrote second part that also became a huge success mm-hmm. now problem comes as an author that authors keep on getting ideas mm-hmm. okay so while i was writing another no job part 2 i was getting an idea of she raised mm-hmm. okay so i wrote she raised and in between which became a national best selling book mm. so while rhythm roger 2 finished uh, i thought that okay let me start rhythm roger 3 okay i even started on i think i wrote 5000 10000 words mm. but then suddenly a idea popped out and that of, led to a different novel uh, uh, that that idea popped up oh you are still the one mm. so i started writing you are still the one i signed a contract and i wrote that book mm. now my publisher said okay, okay you have written this book but will not come with the next book soon because this book is selling well mm-hmm. let it become a national best seller mm-hmm. so that wait happened for 3 years 3 and a half years but in that between i knew that okay i cannot write to the roger because in the roger need a specific moment it it need specific sort of marketing mm-hmm. so i knew that okay it's not the time for the roger i have to wait for some time mm-hmm. so i i wrote a different book which is about teenagers mm-hmm. about this simulation about this screens mobile game it's basically on a, a thriller book mm-hmm. uh, written by the on the base of pamchi boom so mm-hmm. it's a lot of teenagers uh, it's a lot of teenagers who are indulged into a game something like pamchi mm-hmm. and then one of the one of the uh, main character he's he kidnapped himself mm-hmm. and now everyone in that town are having seven letters mm-hmm. and those seven letters are actually seven emotional impact of a game called pubg okay. but the thrilling part is that each and every letter is entangled oh. everyone is entangled okay so it's a thrilling book the its, it's name is game of death so definitely that idea it. popped up suddenly yeah uh, the idea popped up suddenly so i finished that book i thought okay let me stop with rhythm brother i'll finish that one first mm. so i did that no idea bahut acha lag raha tha yeah and when i sh- showed to a publisher they said ki ah teen saal baad mein yaari publish kar diye <laughs> so now my next book is coming the game of death which is about to release i think will be in october or in november it will be releasing okay mm. so now i am thinking ki okay now i should write read the project part 3 even before you know another idea pops up and <laughs> <laughs> so that happened <laughs> then suddenly i was when i was working on this money molecule channel mm. i thought that there is so much into financial thing what i have learned well, from the study i am 44 mm. so in this 44 years i have learned a lot about money mm. i have learned about the financials i i understand that why people are poor why people are rich so i thought why not share such type of kind of theories with people mm. so i don't know i started writing that one now <laughs> so my the the project part 3 is still pending bechara so this is and every day i get somewhere around 10 to 15 messages Sir, when is Adam Raja three coming? <laughs> so, so that's what I'm saying. Writing a sequel is very tough because you'll keep on getting ideas and the sequel will get delayed, delayed, delayed. Mm. So that's the problem. Yeah. So, so what about the what the next book you are working on? Uh, actually, you're thinking about what you said. That's why um, I always tend to like you know media such as books or movies that uh, are self-contained and you know. Like they may, I'm all the loose ends by the end are tied up so that you don't need a sequel. The book itself is, you know, perfect, uh, in a sense. So you know, some of my favorite movies they are like the um, standalone films, and you know they don't have any sequels. And you know, there's a certain beauty or charm to that that you know only one of this thing exists, and uh, the creator can easily move on to another idea without having to worry about you know how should I follow this up in any way because it's already kind of perfect. So um, regarding illusory escape, there's like obviously a lot of potential for a sequel considering it uh, uh, ends on a cliffhanger. But honestly, uh, I feel like even I, I'll just end up like you, you know, <laughs> writing books that are completely unrelated to illusory escape and uh, just I wouldn't say forget about it, but you know, like have a very long time pass before any sequel can be made to illusory escape. So that like kids of your age, like my son is also of same. I think he's one or two years younger to me. Mm. 
So I have seen that kids of your age they are too much into Hollywood movies. Mm. Like my son, he will not watch any Bollywood movie. He will never watch it. So we are now watching those movies. Like Bollywood movies, we are Hindi movies. Yeah, but uh, I have seen that kids like you and, and your Gen Z type people, mm. you you actually are too much into Hollywood movies and stuff like that. Mm. So how was those movies have inspired you to write such book? Oh, that because was... because such type of books, science fiction, I feel. Indian market still don't yeah. accept it to that level. Yeah, science fiction. I don't know. I don't know how they have accepted Ritam Roger. Because when I when I wrote that book, I gave it to my old publisher. They said, "No one will read this book. Oh, <laughs> stop writing it or don't publish it." But luckily, that worked. So it's it's very tough in Indian market. I I can understand it. I mean, for the main so your... mainstream audience, like uh, obviously science fiction in Bollywood is, I would say, is severely mm-hmm. underexplored genre. Like I mean, although there are like you know a few uh, cult classic or you know very movies that have gone on to define Bollywood culture, which are in science fiction. Like take a look at Koi Mil Gaya or uh, um, so there was copy of ET. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, I wouldn't say it was a copy of ET. You know, I've like watched the movie and you know it does have a few ideas of its own, but it's, it's almost in ET, but they have just. Modified yeah. it in the Bollywood way. Yeah, so that's why it became a little different from ET. Yeah, honestly, that approach kind of worked because you know that film has become uh, ingrained as part of our culture. Uh, also, another movie that uh, you know has sort of gained cult status in Bollywood is uh, you know the first um, Chitti movie. Even that was uh, like a kind of groundbreaking movie for Bollywood because. Uh, I I don't say Chitti movie is that grown big. Chitti was just a robot they have shown. They are not showing technology movie. If you want to see the first cult movie which has actually given a technological or science fiction ahead in India and Bollywood movies, go and watch Seventeenth December. Seventeenth is Suman. Was an actor. Seventeenth December uh, is the movie name, and I think Willen Suman was an actor in that. True. That movie came somewhere around ninety eight or between two thousand something. Mm. That was the first movie where they have shown uh, computers uh, without any screen and all those things. Mm. That was the first movie. Mm. Yeah, that and it's a, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful movie. It's a beautiful movie. Mm. You need to see that. Although I was going to watch it, I was going to watch it. But at the time where it came, it was on a very high end. Yeah. Uh, so, see, the thing about, uh, as I was saying about Chitti, is that. Um, Oh, she like sure enough. The movie wasn't that uh, groundbreaking, you know. And plus the fact, yeah, I I I find Chitti very funny. Oh, then I made me take a camera like that. See, uh, <laughs> that is definitely it's like very action packed. But at the same time, um, one thing I really appreciate about the movie is that how it um, delved into the dangers of artificial intelligence long before that actually became conversation. In uh, our current life, and even though you know, like the whole yeah, but, the whole thing was very still, silly. But still, Bollywood is very old in that. Yeah. Right? The the concert what they have shown, I think that was that concert was shown in Cyber when I was in my Indian college. I think thirty five years back. Mm-hmm. And that time movie came Cyber. That was much much ahead of time what it is now. Uh, I mean, uh, at least I guess we can credit the movie for introducing. Uh, Robots to Bollywood, at least both of you have seen. And you know, going back to the original question of how much Hollywood actually inspired my novel, I would say like almost uh, you know seventy to eighty percent of it because again, I was thirteen, fourteen while writing the novel and very impressionable teenagers. You know, every single sci-fi Hollywood movie I would see, um, it would just get stuck in my brain for you know the. uh upcoming weeks or months and all i would think you know the various theories and how uh the you know internal logic of this sci-fi world of you know whatever movie i watched would actually work and a lot of that actually uh, was shared on um, a lot of that actually showed on uh, usury escape i think i had seen the matrix uh, for the first time i guess in your prior to watching usury escape and you know as we already discussed before that was a huge influence on my novel um surprisingly uh one thing that really inspired me to you know inspire the uh, themes and the um as i said before like 
this novel I treated kind of like an exercise in how to write a story or how to present a story basically or present a narrative. One um, form of entertainment that really helped the writing process of my novel was actually, believe it or not, video games. So, um, and you know, when I say video games, I obviously don't mean something like PUBG or Fortnite or, you know, uh, things that you play online with other people. But I mean like single player video games, you know, where it's made by um, a developer company and they have basically made a playable movie. Like you um, are fit into the shoes of a character and then you are the one who controls him and guides him through the story that is made. And it's uh, a one-time experience, you know, like watching a movie. It's not, uh, uh, it's not like uh, multiplayer games where you play with other people, where you know every single encounter or match is different. But uh, single-player games where you just can go through one single story from start to end, it's be- till you reach the end credits. And uh, that actually really inspired the way I wrote my novel. Uh, the different super contrast. Yeah. Yeah, first super super. Yeah, Contra. Uh, it's like a very old game. <laughs> very old game. Well, my very old game. I I loved that game at that time when I was so too, too young. So you will get this. Uh, my book is coming, right? So you will you will get to know about Super Contra. You will get to know about PUBG. Mm. So although Contra name is still there, the same name I have used. Mm. PUBG name I have changed. Oh, so yeah. so <laughs> everything you will see in that book. In the, I think um, the kids of your age they should definitely read that book. You will you will feel that that yeah. how much into it. Yeah. I'm too excited to get that book out because I feel that it's yeah, that I, book is actually for for the for the youngsters. Yeah, I really hope I get like a sneak peek or preview into it. <laughs> it's, it's a thrilling experience. I don't. I I tell you, um, I was just this was this is my ninth book and. Uh, this is the toughest book for me because there were so many characters. Mm-hmm. Every character is reading a letter. Every character is entangled with some other character. Mm-hmm. So there was too much confusion. So too much thrilling into it. Past story, present story, and not many things into it happen. Yeah. And with every page, you will be like on your toes that what happened next, mm-hmm. what happened next. So while I was writing it, I have read it. I think more than 20, 30 times because I was getting confused while I was writing. Yeah. So there was the toughest novel I have written, toughest novel for myself. So I'm too excited to get the first review out of it. That what people will say about it. Although my editor has read it and she loved it. She said that this is one of the best thriller I have read. So I'm just guessing my readers will also love it. I'm but sure. apart from that, I'll 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 still say to all the viewers that. The Illusory Escape, it's a beautiful book, especially all the teenagers, they should definitely go and read it. Okay, book both interesting, yeah, concept both good. Simulation theory is a topic, and it's a lot of people who are thinking you keep on judging what next, what next. So if you love games, you love Matrix, all those books, you should definitely read this Illusory Escape. It's a link in the description, maybe you can purchase it from there. So, um, Siddharth, thanks a lot for your time. और बड़ा अच्छा लगा बहुत अच्छा डिस्कशन किया हमने मतलब ये टॉपिक ऐसा है कि मुझे ना मजा बहुत आता है सो बात मी बट आई होप यू एंजॉयड द सेशन या या एब्सोल्युटली आई एम रियली एक्साइटेड टू रीड योर बुक एज़ वेल यू नो बिकॉज़ आई डिडंट नो मच अबाउट इट यू नो बिफोर यू टोल्ड मी इट्स अबाउट वीडियो गेम्स एंड यू नो ऑल ऑफ दिस यू तो ये वो तो आने वाली है आई विल से आई विल से गो एंड रीड द रोजर फर्स्ट या डेफिनेटली इट्स Rhythm Rogers, The Secrets of Electron. When you will read that, you will understand. Okay, it's, it's, it's a complete science fiction. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So thanks, thanks, and that for being on this show. So much for these podcasts. It's been an absolute honor, you know, being here and uh, talking to like a, an established, you know, really inspiring author like you. And I hope that uh, you know, like writing illusory escape, as you said, at an age that would I I would no longer consider as tender now. Uh, as compared to back then, but still, you know, if uh, anyone who reads this book finds inspired to uh, write something of their own, get their own ideas on the paper, or you know, not just about writing books, you know, getting across anything that's been in your mind on something, you know, tangible, you know, something that can be productive, and I would just be uh, really grateful for that. And for this, yeah, I, I, I will well believe. Authors are not someone. Well, if, if you have seen Facebook and social media, mm. there are many people selling courses. Yeah. Okay, write your book in 10 days, write your book in 48 hours, mm. get it published in 6 days. 
bullshit. <laughs> I'm saying on this open screen is bullshit. Authors are born authors. Mm. One who cannot imagine cannot write a book in three days. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever course you take, whether you take off 99 rupees or you take 9,000 rupees, you cannot write a book if you cannot imagine. Mm. My second book, Chariots of Mahabharat, it's a book about Mahabharat, which I have written when I was in class 10th. Oh, that's... Uh... <laughs> See, people, if someone is a painter, he he would have started painting when he would be three or four years old. Mm. If someone is poet, the imagination, the rhymes, they would have started doing when they were five or six. Mm. Similarly, if someone is writer, he must have started scribbling, creating stories. Mummy, papa, say, shoot, bolna. Yeah, one thousand watch out. So this all would have started in the very early age. Yeah. Later age, it's only that that how you can frame your sentences, how you can make your two line story into a two hundred page. Yeah, the un- that only yeah. you can learn. The ideas but have to no, be no from twenty. Yes, but nobody can teach you from a scratch that okay, write a novel in forty eight hours. Nobody can teach. You. Yeah, absolutely. Because and maybe no, but that the truth. Yeah, because um, you know, after I first wrote my uh, novel, uh, looking back, I realized that you know, um, I I actually learned so much about the writing process. Actually, putting my pen to the paper and you know, writing the uh, two fifty or three hundred pages that that book was, and uh, you know, like I think uh, it's. You can, as authors, we can widely agree upon the fact that you know you cannot become an author until you truly like write something, even if it's extremely amateur. Look, but imagine everything. Yeah, everything need to be imagined from clothes, from colors, from voice, from expressions. Mm-hmm. Everything yeah. need to be imagined, mm-hmm. and that's not possible in forty-eight hours. Yeah, and definitely. It's... So you have done a great job writing your first book. I think in fourteen years. Mm-hmm. So congratulations and all the best for your future. Thank you. We in touch, we'll have more podcasts with you when your next book comes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you'll be the first person I send the book to. <laughs> yeah, definitely, my pleasure. Thank you, thank you, Siddharth, for being on this show. Uh, thank you so much, Amanjusar. It's been great. Thank you.